guys, I'm Cakes. And this video is going to be the first part of a weekly series in which I talk about my game, Tangerine Defenders. I want to use this as a memory dump in which I go back in the future and reminisce about the good old times and about how the game came to life and came to be. And so this is going to be the first one. This week, I worked on my skill tree in the game. It currently looks like this. And the biggest issue in the beginning of the week was that I wanted to display the actual damage numbers of when I'm learning an ability and when I add in stats so that they update as I add in more stats. For example, if I make this guy level 4, and he trains attack plus 12. I want this to deal more damage than before. Right now it's 207. I add in 12 and now it does 240 damage. Because I think that gives the player a nice feeling of progression. Oh, look at how much damage my ability does. So the biggest problem I had with this goal was that I had hard-coded values on my abilities. Let's take this for example. I have an ability called Ice Crash and this Ice Crash ability has a hard-coded damage multiplier and freeze duration. And the stats on the unit are a different thing. And I don't want to go into too much detail of what this stat does, but it basically can have a base. And at that base, for example, we have 100 attack. It can be then further increased as a multiplier, for example, by 100% turning 100 attack into 200 attack. And that is what you're seeing here on the skill tree. For example, this attack plus 10% is the multiplier that I was talking about. And so I needed to basically change these skills, which I didn't know that before, right? I needed to change them into st using stats as well. And so over the week, this is what I did. I added the stats to the skills and now everything in there is obsolete. The hard-coded values have gone. And then as I was doing this, I also wanted to unify the skill descriptions or the ability descriptions. For example, this poison arrow says 372 poison damage per second. And I had the choice to choose between DPS or poison damage per second. And a big inspiration for that was Path of Exile and Diablo 4. And in the end, I choose uh, the values from Path of Exile. They call everything damage per second. I think it makes some sense. And additionally, I wanted to make it so that obviously everything that is different in an ability, for example, cold damage is, cool, uh, is blue and fire damage is red, while physical damage is somewhat like, I don't know, it's a yellow kind of thing. And so the, the biggest problem I had with this strings that I use are enums. And whenever I wanted to add a new string, I would have to, for example, I wanted to add in one of these stat strings. I needed to add that in to the correct location if I wanted to sort them in any shape or form, right? First the stats, then the ability names, then the ability descriptions. But then I had to make sure that the enum array matches the string array that I have which is a second array, of course, where all the actual strings are, because I'm not loading them from files. And that was very tedious. So in the end, I decided on passing a, what I call text list file, which has the enum to the left and then the string to the right. And then we, we pass that file and first we write the enum array and then we write the string array below. And I call that the text parser. And the cool thing about this is that I can add a string and an enum anywhere I want. And I don't have to make sure that the offset is correct and I have both arrays correct. That's all done by the text parser. And the way this works is I build my program and before I'm actually compiling all my C++ files, I call this text parser, which then writes me the header file for my game. In my game, it's called texts.h. 
it writes that file and after it's done writing the file it then compiles the program and uses the updated values which is fucking awesome i love it and so yeah after changing all of that i needed to decide on a skill tree design because uh, many of my abilities were all using energy as resource and that is bad because if i'm spamming for example this poison arrow i am unable to cast a poison cloud if it also costs energy because i will be depleting my energy using the poison arrow and this is where diablo 4 was another inspiration because in diablo 4 you have what is called core abilities and these core abilities spend your resource which in my case would be energy and then uh, on top of that you have cooldowns that don't require any energy or some of them even replenish energy which is like a cool trade-off of oh I, I spare my abilities now i don't deal much damage and then i use the cooldown to generate more energy so i can spare more of my core ability and so i decided to do the same which is which means that at tier one you get to choose your core abilities and yes you can choose more than one and then as you f uh, travel out further you get to choose a cooldown ability and i i could see myself adding in another tier of more abilities but mostly right now i call this skill tree finished for like a first alpha version or beta version i think this is good enough since i'm making a tower defense game okay i'm not making an mmo or like a single player RPG game. Okay, I like the RPG element that I add to my game, but that I'm not making... Yeah, I think this is already too much. Uh, but it is how it is. Yeah. Currently, the Hila's skill tree looks kind of cringe because it's not done. And I've been working on adding in three more abilities this week. This is how much I got done. I first added in a chain lighting ability. I added in cleanse and I added in lightning strike. And I guess I could showcase them real quick. Let's get shine lighting, this and this. And so the, the biggest problem I had with these skills was the cleanse. Because cleanse could either remove all debuffs or I decided on only removing a certain duration or an amount of duration from the debuff. Meaning that I, later on I can make this all powerful debuff that all the units have and then cleanse is somewhat useless which i think would be a cool idea where you can create craft some boss fights where you have a debuff and even the healer cannot get rid of it so that's the idea behind it like this is how lightning strike works it's not that strong actually it doesn't look so cool but it does a lot of damage or at least it did then chain lighting this is my favorite ability actually boots boots there's a very high range Kaboom! yeah anyways cleanse cleanses the debuff and heals a little bit and then lightning strike just destroys everything anyways boys that's about it. That's how much I got done this week. I'm very proud of myself. How much I got, got done. Uh, looking at it now from the outside. Shows me that I have gotten quite a few things done. I'm happy about it. And so yeah. Hope you enjoyed this small little video about what I did. And see you all in the next one.